Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, join my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will describe and explain how vertebrates are sorted into groups. So, so let's, let's do this. this. Our learning target for today is, I can describe and explain how vertebrates are sorted into groups. King Philip came over for good spaghetti. I know you're probably thinking, what in the world does he mean by this? Well, this mnemonic is a memory clue that stands for kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. This is known as a classification system designed to use observations and comparison to place similar organisms in one group. Today we will go into the five kingdoms and focus specifically on the animal kingdom. There are two types of animals in the animal kingdom. Animals with backbones and animals without backbones. Animals with backbones are called vertebrates and animals without backbones are called invertebrates. There are five major classifications of vertebrates which are mammals, reptiles, birds, fish, and amphibians. In today's video, we will focus on vertebrates and how they are sorted into groups based upon their unique characteristics. Let's start off with mammals first. Mammals include a wide range of animals including dolphins, chimpanzees, kangaroos, dogs, echidna, sloths, antelope, elephants, whales, you, me, and the list goes on and on. Some of our unique characteristics are the following. We have hair or fur, we breathe with our lungs, our young girl inside the mother, we are warm-blooded, we have live births, and feed our young milk. Think about all the mammals we listed earlier. They all match these characteristics. These characteristics and traits are specific only to mammals and how we are classified and sorted into this group of animals. Let's move on to reptiles. Some examples of reptiles include the African spurred tortoise, Komodo dragon, American alligator, gharial, green sea turtle, saltwater crocodile, black mamba, tuatara, and inland typhoon. Reptiles have the following unique characteristics. They have dry scaly skin, they live in hot, dry deserts, warm and wet tropical rainforests, swamps, marshes, estuaries, and other places that are usually warm and hot. They lay their eggs on land, they breathe with their lungs, and probably their most distinguishing characteristic is that they are cold-blooded, which means their body temperature changes with the environment, unlike other organisms like mammals, whose body temperature remains relatively the same. Quick checks for understanding. Number one, what are three differences between mammals and reptiles? Number two, what are two things mammals and reptiles have in common? Pause the video and take three minutes to answer. You got this. Now, let's move on to birds. We've all probably seen many types of birds in our lifetime. Some examples are hawks, chickens, roosters, eagles, and ducks. All birds have the following characteristics. They're covered with feathers, they breathe with their lungs, they lay eggs on land, they have wings, and they're warm-blooded, meaning that their body temperature does not change unlike reptiles. Let's look at the bird examples we mentioned earlier. Each one of these birds possesses these specific characteristics that are largely only characteristics you can use to describe a bird. Now let's move on to fish. Fish are the largest group of vertebrates. This makes sense because almost 70% of our planet is covered in water, and all of this water contains many different types of fish, including tuna, seahorse, clownfish, neon tetra, manta ray, pufferfish, ocean sunfish, whale sharks, piranha, and hundreds of other species of fish. There are so many characteristics that vary from fish to fish, but what most of them have in common is that they have fins. Most fish are covered in scales, they breathe through their gills, and they are cold-blooded, which again means that their body temperature changes with the temperature of the water. Quick checks for understanding. Number one, what do fish have in common with reptiles? Number two, what is the difference between how fish breathe and how mammals breathe? Why does this happen? Pause the video and take three minutes to write your responses. We have ultimate confidence in you. Now let's move on to our last animal group, amphibians. Amphibians tend to have traits similar to fish and reptiles. This is largely because they spend time in water and on land. Some common examples of amphibians include frogs, 
salamanders, toads, and newts. Amphibians have the following characteristics. They lay jelly-like eggs in water, they hatch from eggs and they can live on land as an adult. Some have thin, smooth, moist skin, they have gills and lungs, they're cold-blooded. Young amphibians breathe through gills like fish, adult amphibians breathe air through their lungs. Quick checks for understanding. Read the following descriptions and determine which group of vertebrates these organisms would belong to. Pause the video, you have 5 minutes to complete. You got this. In summary, scientists sort vertebrates into similar groups based upon their unique characteristics. If an animal is cold-blooded and has gills and lungs, then it is most likely an amphibian. If an animal has feathers and lays hard eggs on land, then it is most likely a bird. Notice how these distinguishing characteristics make it easy to sort and group vertebrates. Scientists can sort and group vertebrates, and so can you as a brilliant young scientist in training. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with describing and explaining how vertebrates are sorted into groups by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep going, going because it's not over until you, you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan the QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace, and have a positive, productive day. I'm a man, I am so.